The following is an EWTN special presentation. Good afternoon and welcome to the Ukrainian Catholic Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. My name is Father John Senyu. I am a priest of the Ukrainian Catholic Archeparchy of Philadelphia and will be your host today to help you understand the progression of this pontifical divine liturgy. Today's divine liturgy commemorates the 100th anniversary of the appointment and arrival of the first Greek Catholic bishop in the United States, Bishop Stephen Sater Ortinsky. It also coincides with the World Synod of Ukrainian Catholic bishops presently being held for the first time in the United States, right here in Philadelphia. The procession has begun moving down the main aisle of the cathedral. Following the initial assista are various Roman Catholic bishops, archbishops. They will be followed by Eastern Catholic bishops and cardinals. The Ukrainian Catholic Church is a large church for the Eastern Catholic Churches. It is about five million members. And so there are many Ukrainian Catholic bishops who have gathered here for this synod, the Worldwide Synod. Many of them are from Ukraine, but they are also from other parts of the world. The main celebrant and homilist today will be Major Archbishop Lubomir Cardinal Huzar. He is Major Archbishop of Kiev Holich in Ukraine and Major Archbishop for the Ukrainian Catholic Church throughout the world. Major Archbishop Lubomir Cardinal Huzar. The Ukrainian Catholic Church is a major archiepiscopate with essentially all of the rights and privileges of a patriarchate. And so the chief bishop of the Ukrainian Catholic Church is the major archbishop. He is the head of the synod of Ukrainian Catholic bishops, which governs the church. At this time, the deacon asks the major archbishop to bless the congregation.
major archbishop and the other concelebrating bishops will take their places on a throne which is set up near the middle of the church, the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. The major archbishop will now bless using the trikirion and dikirion, trikirion symbolizing the trinity and the dikirion symbolizing the two natures of Jesus Christ. He blesses in four directions, to the east, to the west, to the north, and to the south, indicating the ends of the earth. of this blessing are taken from Psalm 80, a prayer that God would bless the vineyard which he has planted. As the Archbishop blesses in four directions, the choir answers, may God grant you many happy years. The host for today's celebration is the Ukrainian Catholic Archeparchy of Philadelphia, headed by Metropolitan Archbishop Stefan Soroka. The Synod, which takes place over a period of about 10 days, is also held here in the Archeparchy of Philadelphia. Archeparchy is the eastern term for an archdiocese. <laughs> The grandeur of this divine liturgy, I think, is very obvious and dates back to the ancient church. Many of the ceremonies in a pontifical divine liturgy are different from the ceremonies in a normal divine liturgy you would see in a parish church. 
Many of them are of an ancient nature, older even than the ceremonies of the normal divine liturgy, as they date to the period when a bishop had only one parish and the bishop was always the main celebrant of a divine liturgy. The deacon now asks for authority to begin the divine liturgy. The major archbishop blesses the deacon and the first concelebrating priest. The first concelebrating priest now ascends to the altar. The royal doors are opened. And the divine liturgy formally begins. Blahoslovi Vladiko. In a Vikivichne, Gospodevi Pomolimse, the responses for today's divine liturgy are being performed by a combined choir of various Ukrainian Catholic parishes in the Archeparchy of Philadelphia and also other parishes. During this part of a pontifical divine liturgy, the celebrating bishop and the other bishops do not ascend to the altar. They remain in the midst of the church, that is, in the middle of the church. And this is a reflection of an earlier custom, whereas the actual, this part of the divine liturgy was performed either in an oratory next to the church or even outside of the church. And the official entrance of the celebrants was made a little later in what is called the small entrance.
choir now sings what is called the first antiphon. This is a remnant of a whole selection of psalms that normally were sung before the beginning of a divine liturgy in the early church and now in the present form during this first part of the divine liturgy. We see to the, on the right-hand side of the major archbishop, Archbishop Metropolitan Stefan Soroka, the Archbishop of the Ukrainian Catholic Archeparchy of Philadelphia. To his right is Metropolitan Basil Schott of the Ruthenian Byzantine Catholic Church in the United States. On the right side of Bishop Schott is the retired Archbishop of Philadelphia, Stephen Sulik. The choir is now singing the hymn, O Only Begotten Son, an ancient liturgical hymn of the church proclaiming the divinity of Jesus Christ. The other con-celebrating priests now ascend to the altar. This divine liturgy, I am told, will be sung in three different languages, in Ukrainian, in Old Church Slavonic, and in English. These languages represent the major languages used in the Ukrainian Catholic Church in the United States. <laughs>
this time, the little entrance with the gospel book takes place. As I mentioned earlier, this is a remnant of the ancient custom. The archbishop, the main celebrant, would enter the church, the cathedral, at this time. And this was actually the beginning of the ancient divine liturgy. When all the assista have arrived before the major archbishop, he will enter into the holy place, into the sanctuary, and ascend to the altar. The gospel book, of course, represents Jesus Christ. It is richly decorated and always accorded the highest of honor. The Major Archbishop blesses once again with the Trikirion and Dikirion. The choir answers, may God grant you many happy years. The Archbishop, the Major Archbishop says, Let the light of your countenance shine upon us, O Lord, that walking in it we may see the light of your unapproachable glory. The deacon replaces the Gospel book on the altar, and the Major Archbishop will now ascend to the altar. Archbishop ascends to the altar. The con-celebrating clergy sing, Son of God, risen from the dead, 
save us who sing to you. Alleluia. The major archbishop now incenses around the altar. This is also a remnant from the ancient liturgy when this was actually the beginning, the entrance of the celebrants and the beginning of the ancient divine liturgy. He does this incensing himself, indicating also the beginning of the divine liturgy. Normally, the deacons do the incensing as well as all of the litanies during the divine liturgy. deacon or the first deacon holds the trichirion, the three branch candelabra on the opposite side of the major archbishop. I'm sorry, he holds the dechirion, that's the two branched candelabra. Major Archbishop holds in his left hand the staff, which is a symbol of his office of authority to govern the church. Since he is the ranking or the first prelate during this divine liturgy, he is the only bishop who holds a staff. Archbishop incenses the icons on the iconostas, the con celebrating priests and deacons and assista, and then all the people in the church. this incensing is occurring, the choir sings the troparian and the kondakian of the day. These are variable hymns to commemorate the particular observance of the day this divine liturgy is celebrated.
Priyati Yese Bojanash Ito Vislavo Selayemo Otchu Isiro Isviato Modukovi Nini Pauchak the choir now sings an ancient liturgical hymn called the Trisagion Hymn. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. It is sung first in Ukrainian and afterwards in the Greek language. This is a remnant of the very early Byzantine divine liturgy, which was initially celebrated in the Greek language. Primarily, today's Divine Liturgy is in the Ukrainian language. Some parts of the pontifical will be in Greek, others will be in Old Church Slavonic, and still other parts will be in English. The concelebrating assistant priests and clergy and bishops now sing the Trisagion hymn in Greek. Archbishop now takes his place on the throne which is located directly behind the altar. It is the normal seat for the con-celebrating hierarch. Prokimenon is now sung, a remnant of a much longer hymn taken from the Psalms of the Old Testament. After this hymn, the readings of Holy Scripture will follow, the Epistle reading and the Gospel reading.
today's epistle reading is taken from St. Paul's epistle, second epistle to the Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 6 to 11. same epistle will now be read in Ukrainian. the right of the major archbishop is the Archbishop Metropolitan of Canada, Lawrence Hutsulak. During the singing of the Alleluia, the protodeacon incenses the entire cathedral. After the incensing, the protodeacon will approach the major archbishop and ask for a blessing and the authority to proclaim the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The gospel will be read presumably in both Ukrainian and English.
Владико, благовестителя святого апостола и евангелиста Луки. Бог молит вам и святого славного и всехвального апостола и евангелиста Луки. Нехай даст. May God, through the intercession of the holy, glorious, all-praiseworthy Apostle and Evangelist Luke, grant that you proclaim the good news with great power for the fulfillment of the gospel of his beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Святого Євангелія. Від Луки Святого Євангелія читання. Казав Господь, як бажаєте, щоб вам чинили люди, чиніть їм і ви так само. Коли ви любите тих, що вас люблять, яка ваша заслуга? Та ж бої грішники люблять тих, що їх люблять. І коли чините добро тим, що вам чинять, яка вам заслуга? І грішники те саме роблять. І коли ви позичаєте тим, від кого маєте надію назад узяти, яка ваша заслуга? Адже і грішники грішникам позичають, щоб відібрати від них рівне. Ви ж любіть ворогів ваших, добро чиніте їм. І позичайте, не чекаючи назад нічого, і велика буде ваша нагорода, і будете синами Всевишнього, бо він добрий для невдячних і злих. Будьте милосердні, як і Отець ваш милосердний. The Lord said, do to others what you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, how can you claim any credit? Sinners do as much. If you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what merit is there in it for you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. Love your enemy and do good. Lend without expecting repayment. Then your recompense shall be great. You will rightly be called sons of the Most High, since he himself is good to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be compassionate as your Father is compassionate. At 
this time, Metropolitan Archbishop Stefan Soroka of the Ukrainian Catholic Archeparchy of Philadelphia, four Ukrainians, will give an introduction. Slava Jesus Christu! Zaklek propovedate vsim narodom. Bu jadrom suženja episkopa Stefana i Sotar i Artenskoho i šuhodnišnje švetkovanje z nohode stolitnoho juvaleju jeho prijezdu duša jak peršoho hrekokotolarskoho episkopa pereklekajuča s tem zaklekom propovedite vsim narodom. Vitaju vas, vitajmo vših, kto prebuo na cij šatkovanja, še podjakovate samohutmu Bohu za jeho blagosvene zisane čeraz episkopa Ortenskoho. Vitajmo teh, kto z mih prijetnateša do nas v cij katedri, teh, kto zebravše v spesjane pod hodhovljenjem v zali iz postarahaje za bohosluženjem po telebačenju i bahatoh hladačil riznik bi razpovidan jak je djakujče program EWTN takož prednalaše do nas. The call to preach to all nations, it was at the heart of the ministry of Bishop Stephen Sauter Ortinsky. And this celebration on the occasion of the 100th anniversary of his arrival in the USSA as the first Greek Catholic bishop responds to that call to preach to all nations. Welcome to all who have chosen to be a part of this celebration in giving gratitude to Almighty God for his best blessings through Bishop Ortinsky. Welcome to those who were able to join us in this cathedral, those who are gathered in the specially prepared overflow area, joining us via television, and to the many viewers of all faiths joining us today on the EWTN network. Welcome. And we most especially welcome the personal representative of our Holy Father, the Most Reverend Pietro Sambi, the Apostolic Nuncio to the United States of America. He will bring greetings from Pope Benedict XVI, our Holy Father, at the conclusion of our divine liturgy today. We welcome the hierarchy of the Latin Church, among them Cardinal Justin Regalia of Philadelphia, Cardinal Terence McCarrick, Emeritus of Washington, D.C., Cardinal Anthony Bavalacqua, Emeritus of Philadelphia, and our many, many brother Catholic bishops from dioceses across this nation. You have honored us with your presence and your prayerful participation today. Welcome and thank you. We welcome the distingu distinguished hierarchs of our sister Orthodox churches. Among them, Archbishop Anthony of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of USA, with whom, with whom we enjoy a very close fraternal collaboration. Metropolitan Nicholas of Amosos of the Karpaita Russian Orthodox Church in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. And Metropolitan Evangelos of the Greek Orthodox Metropolis of New Jersey. Your holy presence and your prayers are appreciated. And special to our hearts is the fraternal presence of representatives of our Jewish and Muslim brethren, representatives of other faiths in our Philadelphia community. Thank you for your eternal prayer and your friendship. One of the special gifts of today's celebration is the unity of the Ukrainian Catholic Church and the Byzantine Catholic Church around today this altar. Hierarchy and priest representatives of both churches graced the memory of Bishop Ortinsky given that he was the first bishop for both churches during his time of office. Mutual respect and close collaboration is characteristic of our relationship, and we welcome it, we celebrate it, and we are grateful for it. And a special welcome, then, to our Byzantine uh, church uh, bishops and to all the bishops of the Eastern Catholic churches that were able to, to join us this day at this celebration. O sobljivo vitanje za saju jerarhem Ukrajinske katolijske crkve iz jeparhiji u šoho svitu, v tomu z naši ulubljene batkjuštine Ukrajine, Pošti, Franciji, Angliji, Avstraliji, Brazilije, Argentina, Kanade, Taša. Vaša molotovna prisutnost 
The Archbishop is welping, welp welcoming Ukrainian Catholic bishops from all over the world. Referring especially to the importance of this worldwide synod of the Ukrainian Catholic Church. As we said earlier, this occasion is especially significant because it commemorates not only the 100th anniversary of the arrival of the first Greek Catholic Bishop in the United States, but also coincides with the World Synod of Ukrainian Catholic Bishops held for the first time in the United States. Poland, France, England, Australia, Brazil, Argentina, Canada, and the USA. Your prayer for presence has added great solemnity to this celebration. And it is also significant that the Synod of Ukrainian Catholic Bishops is meeting in this, the first eparchy to be established outside of Ukraine. The Synod is the highest authority, authoritative body of our church. We pray for special inspiration by the Holy Spirit for the Synod Fathers and for the Ukrainian Catholic Church in the U USA as we meet here. I am very hopeful for a renewal of faith and for a more life-giving, energetic expression of our faith within our archeparchy and within our entire church as a result of these celebrations. The Archbishop is welcoming the Honorable Oleg Shamshur, Ambassador of Ukraine to the United States and other members of the diplomatic corps. He is also welping, welcoming members of the family of Bishop Ortinsky who have gathered for this occasion. A most special, very special welcome is extended to the Supreme Knight of the Knights of Columbus, Mr. Carl Anderson and his wife, and also to the State Deputy for Pennsylvania, Michael O'Connor, accompanied by his state officers. And as you can see earlier today, an impressive representation from the fourth degree color guard. I have been humbled by the outpouring of the generosity and the goodness of the Knights of Columbus shown to our Ukrainian Catholic hierarchy and to our church. You show great dedication and love for those who serve in the Holy Catholic Church, and it is appreciated. Thank you for being a part of today's celebration in so many special ways. Я би хотів особливо подякувати тим, хто приїхав сьогодні з різні парафи нашої архіпархії, що приєднати що до нас в молитві і подяці. And the Archbishop is thanking all those who have gathered from various parishes of the Ukrainian Catholic Church in the United States for gathering in Philadelphia to celebrate this event. І мені важко передати словами мою сердечну вдячність багатом щощанникам, монахиням та вірням, які взяли участь приготовлення цих щаткуван. Епископ Бура та його комітет. And all the clergy, sisters, and religious who have gathered here to celebrate this most special occasion. Сьогодні після завершення божественної літургії вірні зможуть зустрітися з епископами. Спочатку епископ повернеться до канцелярії, щоб знати, знати за себе щоткові ризи. Описи вони відео довірних, які зберуться на терені навколо катедри. Крім епископів з України, вони поїдуть голосувати на вибори в Нью-Йорку, бо так, як ви знаєте, що ходи бувають вибори в Україні. Ми запрошуємо вас 
The Archbishop has mentioned that this synod takes place during the general elections in Ukraine, and many of the bishops from Ukraine have left the country and will be able to vote at the consulate in New York. The faithful, all of you, will have opportunity to meet with the bishops following the Divine Liturgy today. They will process back to the chancery, take their investment, change from their vestments, and then they will come on the grounds of the cathedral. And we invite you to visit with them and with one another. We invite you to partake of the food and refreshments available in the hall for all the faithful. Take advantage of the great weather and visit with the bishops and with one another outside on the grounds once you have picked up your refreshments and allow for others to access the refreshments in the hall. Our Lord taught that the last shall be the first in the kingdom of God. While I am introducing our spiritual leader last, he is very much first and foremost in our hearts and our minds. We are especially grateful to His Beatitude Lubomir Cardinal Husser for his spiritual leadership of our Ukrainian Catholic Church. We welcome and we thank him for his celebration of this holy hierarchical divine liturgy and for, for making this 100th anniversary of a celebration so special with his prayerful presence and his sharing. We now invite his Beatitude Lubomir Cardinal Husser to offer his inspired word in the homily. Ми висловуємо особливу вдячність блаженнішому Лубомиру Микадиналу Гузарю за його духовне провідництво нашої Української Католицької Церкви. Ми дякуємо йому за відправлення цієї святої архірейської служби, служби Божої та за перетворення шаткування його столітного ювелею на дійсно особливі, дякуючи його молотовній присутності. А зараз ми запрошуємо блаженнішого Любомира Кардина Хузера виголосити своє надихаюче слово у проповіді. The, Слава Ісусу Христу! The Archbishop has invited Major Archbishop Любомир Кардина Хузар to now begin the homily. Presumably this homily will be first in Ukrainian and afterwards in English. The Major Archbishop is fluent in both Ukrainian and English as well as several other languages. He actually has spent a, a number of years in the United States, having arrived here after World War II, studied in the United States, was ordained a priest here in the United States, and also taught in the Ukrainian Catholic Seminary in Stamford, Connecticut. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Praised be Jesus Christ. Most Reverend Bishops, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Today we have gathered, as we do every Sunday, in the Temple of the Lord. But today we add to the usual Sunday services the celebration of the centennial of the arrival of the first Greek Catholic bishop in the United States. The first Greek Catholic bishop came to give spiritual care to the immigrants who arrived here at the end of the 19th century.
and the beginning of the 20th century. Our attention, first of all, is upon the person of this first Greek Catholic bishop in the United States, Bishop Ortinsky. On the 28th of August, in 1907, he stepped foot on the American continent. Much can be said about him. An unusually valuable person. He was a member of the Order of St. Basil the Great and was ordained for service in this order. He was a golden-mouthed homilist and a person of a very large heart, very merciful heart. One can say a lot about him. And it is my hope that many writings and many written works will be disseminated about his life and about the good he has done. That which we write is not only about his personal, the individual, but rather also for the spiritual good of all of us. Having taken his monastic vows, Bishop Ortinsky wished to become a missionary. He had a missionary spirit. His deepest spiritual desire was to unite himself to those Basilian fathers who had already gone to Brazil to begin their missionary work. But he was called to go instead to North America. And this was a very, very difficult task. As much as we know, he humbly and obediently received, accepted this task because he saw this as an expression of God's will for himself. And thanks to this spiritual position, when he came here, and began this very difficult road, the road to bring to good order the church structures here in this country. Especially to raise, to elevate the spiritual, the spiritual aspect of the immigration here in the United States. In this regard, he achieved great success and he fulfilled the will of God. 
Коли ми сьогодні згадуємо Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, великого, великого владику, when we remember this great bishop today, Sator Ortinsky, це не повинно бути для нас тільки згадкою про когось, this is not simply a memory, a memory about someone who lived long ago. However, this should also be for us an example. An example for us of the Christian life. Not everything goes as we want or as we desire. We cannot always have what is pleasant for us or what is pleasing to us. But sometimes life is difficult and we must accept the difficulties of life. If we want to have success in life, true success, let us not ask what is to our liking, but let us ask what does God want. If we go according to God's way, that way which he has prepared for us, we will have success in our work. Our work will be crowned with success and great fruit. And secondly, we will ourselves find satisfaction and we will be truly happy. Today, this special event, which we have already mentioned, and considering that here there are present bishops from our entire church, I would like to take advantage of this opportunity to express thanks to our church here in the United States of America. Because you are doing so much good for all of our brothers and sisters, and especially those in Ukraine. At one time, our community in the United States needed help and assistance. And various people came to the United States to work here for the benefit of our community in the United States. Among them, we may recognize, first of all, Bishop Sotor Ortinsky, who dedicated his life for work here in the American land. In the last 50 or more years, the situation has changed greatly. Your brothers and sisters in Ukraine and other areas of Europe are feeling and have felt a great necessity, a great necessity for moral and material help. And you have not withheld this, you have not withheld this assistance. 
you have assisted them and continue to assist them. Today, I would like to thank all those and recognize all those who have assisted the church in Ukraine and those who have assisted our brothers and sisters in need. I would like to express to them sincerest thanks в той час, коли потрібно, коли ж потребувала Америка і брати з України не щадили для себе, а щедро помагали. As once our brothers and sisters in Ukraine needed assistance and help. Коли стало знову ж потрібно, you have assisted them in great measure. Наша церква в Америці те саме. And you have responded generously to the needs of the church in Ukraine and in other places. And this is very important. We are not on a different planet. We are in different countries but we are one church. And we all understand the needs of our brothers and sisters. We understand the need of assistance and help. And so, once again, my sincerest thanks to all of you in the name of all those who have needed assistance. Your Eminencies, Your Excellencies, Reverend Clergy, Distinguished Guests, the Most Reverend Metropolitan Stephen of Philadelphia has already greeted all of you. He did it as a good host, he greeted all of you as guests to this festivity, solemnity of today. I do not wish to repeat his greetings, but still I would like to turn to you especially, although, if I may say so, from a different point of view. One hundred years ago, Bishop Soter Ortyński arrived in the United States to become the spiritual leader of those of Ukrainian origin who have come to the shores of the United States looking for freedom and for better life. His task, however, was twofold. First, as I mentioned already, to establish ecclesiastical structures, to organize ecclesiastical life for the immigrants from Ukraine, to help them spiritually. But he also had another task, to explain to his brother bishops of the Latin Rite, 
the local bishops here to explain to them who were these immigrants who, although they insisted that they are Catholics, had a different tradition, different culture, different liturgical rite, were so different in many ways. So different that it seemed impossible to integrate them into the American life. His task was also to explain who these people were. When today, 100 years later, we see you in our church here in this cathedral, the high representatives of the Latin Church in the United States. We see this not only as an, a gesture of friendliness, of fraternity, but we see this as a very concrete expression of that unity that exists today. When at the beginning, 100 years ago, and even little more, there were misunderstandings, there were so many difficulties for the lack of mutual understanding. Today, with the help of God, we are very conscious of who we are and what is our relationship and that we form one church that has different expressions but is ultimately one universal church. Your presence here today is a confirmation of this mutual understanding which exists today. Because the Catholic Church is one, notwithstanding the multiplicity of cultures, languages, peoples that make it up. And the world needs a concrete ex expression of this. And here in this church today, in this cathedral, we have this expression. And this makes us very, very happy. Because understanding one another, respecting one another, supporting one another, we can go ahead with tranquility of heart. We do not have to be afraid of anything. We are united. We are together. And this makes our looking into the second century full of hope justified, well-grounded well hope. We thank you very much for your presence here today with us. And let us together go into the future. Slava Jesusu Christu. As the major archbishop returns to his place, the proto-deacon 
will begin the Actenia following the Gospel and homily. In us, O God, in the greatness of your compassion, we pray you hear us and have mercy. We also pray for our most holy universal pontiff, Benedict, Pope of Rome, for our most blessed major, Archbishop Lubomir, for our most reverend metropolitan, Stefan, for our God-loving bishops, for those who serve and have served in this holy church, for our spiritual fathers and all our brethren in Christ. We also pray for our nation under God, for our government, and for all the military. Justin Cardinal Rigali, Archbishop of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Philadelphia, and the retired Archbishop of Philadelphia, Cardinal Bevilacqua, have now joined the other bishops in the sanctuary of the cathedral. Whose endless labor helped enrich us and for all of the lay people who have borne witness to God. So pray for all the members of our church today that God will guide us and protect us as we strive to live out our faith and share this powerful love of God with all people whom we encounter, inviting them to join us in our walk of faith. So pray that the Lord of the harvest send abundant workers to strengthen and enliven our faith communities and that our young people will heed the never-ceasing call of God to serve as priests, deacons, brothers, and sisters. So pray for the people here present to await your great and bountiful mercies, for those who have been kind to us, and for all Orthodox Christians. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and afar. Let the faithful pray to the
what is referred to as the Great Entrance follows this litany. The Great Entrance is the transfer of the gifts which have been previously prepared, the bread and wine that will be used at the Divine Liturgy. It is transferred from the table of preparation on the side to the main altar. While the celebrants pray the great prayer of preparation, the prayer of worthiness to celebrate these great mysteries. The choir sings what is called the Cherubic Hymn. Him is a prayer of the church of worthiness that we all would be made worthy to welcome the King of all our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who will be offered on this altar Archbishop washes his hands at this time. This is a remnant of the ancient liturgy when the gifts, the bread and wine, was actually prepared at this time. And as a practical matter, the celebrant would wash his hands after the preparation of the bread and wine. This preparation is now done before the divine liturgy actually begins in a separate ceremony. During the actual great entrance, the transfer of the gifts from the side preparation table to the main altar, the protodeacon will begin the procession after the assista. Orthodox Christians, now and ever and forever. Amen. 
One of the Khan's celebrating priests brings the chalice with the wine to the major archbishop. The major archbishop now makes a commemoration of the hierarchy and all the faithful who will be remembered during this divine liturgy. The choir now answers the major archbishop with the conclusion of the cherubic hymn that we may be worthy to receive the King of all, escorted invisibly by ranks of angels. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Archbishop Metropolitan Lawrence Putzuliak now imparts a blessing. Archbishop Lawrence is the Metropolitan Archbishop for Ukrainian Catholics in Canada. Have been presented, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy church and all who enter with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. That we may be delivered from all tribulation, wrath, and misfortune, let us pray to the Lord. At this point in the Divine Liturgy, the con celebrants reverence the bread and wine on the altar and also, an ex also exchange a sign of peace with one another. While they are doing this, the people recite the Nicene Constantinopolitan Creed. the ancient summary of Christian faith. The major archbishop greets Anthony Cardinal Bevilacqua and Justin Cardinal Rigali of Philadelphia.
major archbishop now approaches the other various Latin hierarchs who have gathered here to exchange a sign of peace with them. He now approaches the Orthodox hierarchs who have gathered in this cathedral and exchanges a sign of peace with them as well. And of course, they try not to neglect anyone. Returning to the altar, the Divine Liturgy continues and what is known as the Anaphora is now beginning. The Anaphora is also called in the Western Church the Eucharistic Prayer or the Canon of the Mass in the Roman Catholic Church. It begins as do all major parts of the liturgy with a blessing with the Trichurion and Dicurion. The major archbishop entreats the faithful, let us lift up our hearts. The faithful answer, we have lifted them to the Lord. He then says, let us give thanks to the Lord. The choir answers, it is right and just to worship the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, one in being and undivided. And the concelebrants begin the anaphora or the Eucharistic prayer, which is partly said silently. The other bishops and hierarchs are entering the sanctuary for the Eucharistic prayer. As 
the major archbishop concludes the first prayer of the anaphora. The choir answers, Holy, 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 Lord of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And the anaphora prayers continue. Having recounted the glorious works of salvation done on our behalf, the celebrants now mention the life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and in particular, the institution of the Holy Eucharist at the Last Supper. Having done this, they now come to the words of institution. Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Then over the cup of wine they say, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Once again, the choir answers, Amen. And then the anamnesis. This is recalling the command of Jesus Christ. Do this in remembrance of me. We offer to you, yours of your own, in behalf of all and for all. Next, in, Ori in Oriental liturgies comes what is known as the epiclesis, which is the calling down of the Holy Spirit to change the bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Now commemorations continue, remembrance of various members of the Church of Jesus Christ, those who have gone before us, forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and for every righteous soul that finished this life in faith. <laughs> and especially for our most holy and immaculate, most blessed and glorious lady, the mother of God and ever Virgin Mary. This is a very prominent commemoration of the Theotokos, and the choir answers with a beautiful hymn 
to, this, to the Theotokos, that is, to the Mother of God. It is truly right to bless you, O God-bearing one, as the ever-blessed and immaculate Mother of our God. This hymn in honor of the Mother of God, as most hymns of the Divine Liturgy, is first of all based on Holy Scripture, and then secondly also a product of the instructional definitions of the early church and especially the ecumenical councils of the church, so that the Byzantine Divine Liturgy is both a praise of God in the terms of the Bible of the Holy Scripture, and also in terms of the instructions of the early ecumenical councils of the Church. The major archbishop now makes commemorations of the hierarchy of the Church and all the faithful gathered here and throughout the world who are praying with us. The anaphora is now concluded with the blessing of the major archbishop. May the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. For the precious gifts which have been presented and consecrated, let us pray to the Lord. That our loving God who has received them as a spiritual fragrance upon his holy heavenly mystical altar may send down on us in return his divine grace. The deacon prays the litany of intercession after the anaphora. That we may be delivered from all tribulation, wrath, and misfortune, let us pray to the Lord. <laughs> Help and save, have mercy, and protect us, O God, by your grace. That this whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us ask the Lord. the faithful guide and guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord for the forgiveness and remission of our sins and offenses, let us ask the Lord 
for all that is good and beneficial for our souls and for peace for the world, let us ask the Lord that we may spend the rest of our lives in peace and repentance, let us ask the Lord for our Christian end to our lives, one that is painless and ashamed and peaceful, and for a good defense at the awesome tribunal of Christ, let us ask the Lord. Having asked for unity of the faith and for fellowship of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and one another. At the conclusion of this litany, all those present in the cathedral will sing the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father. Us word, your master with confidence and without condemnation. To dare you come, call Heavenly Father and say, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. proclaims, bow your heads to the Lord. And the people answer, to you, O Lord. At this time, the consecrated bread and wine, the body and blood of Christ, are shown to the people as the major archbishop proclaims holy things for the holy. The choir responds, one is holy, one is Lord Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. water or tepla ta is now added to the chalice, an ancient custom of the Oriental Church. And preparations are made for the reception of the body and blood of Christ. 
first the concelebrants will receive the body and then the precious blood of Christ. Immediately after the communion of the concelebrants, preparations will be made to distribute Holy Communion to those present in the church. The deacons are now receiving Holy Communion. The blood of Christ is distributed to the concelebrants, and afterwards, the precious body, the consecrated bread, is placed into various chalices with the consecrated wine, the blood of Christ, in preparation for distribution on a spoon to all the faithful. so that the faithful, all the faithful in the church, receive the body and blood of Christ under both species, given to them on a spoon. The deacon now will invite the faithful to approach for the reception of Holy Communion with the words, approach with the fear of God and with faith. The choir responds, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. God the Lord has appeared to us.
during the distribution of Holy Communion, which is likely to be rather lengthy, I have an opportunity to say a few words of description about the Ukrainian Catholic Church. The Ukrainian Catholic Church is a quasi-patriarchal major archiepiscopal church headed by the major archbishop whom we have seen here today of Kiev Halych in Ukraine. This church traces its origin to the official Christianization of the ancient state of Kievan Rus in the year 988. After the great schism of churches of 1054, the Ukrainian church gradually became orthodox with allegiance to the patriarch of Constantinople and no longer in communion with the apostolic see of Rome. This communion, however, was restored by the Union of Brest in the year 1596, when the Ruthenian Church, as it was called at that time, signed the Articles of Union with the Apostolic See. Slowly, though, in the homeland of the Ukrainian Catholic Church, the Russian government suppressed all the dioceses of the Ruthenian Church and annexed them to the Orthodox Church. The Union was preserved only in Austria, which had received Western Ukraine in 1772 at the first partition of Poland. The Greek Catholic Church, as it was officially called, to distinguish it from the Roman Catholic and the Armenian Catholic Churches of the Habsburg Empire, was able to elevate its ecclesiastical life and institutions to the highest level of any Eastern Catholic or non-Catholic Church and became the largest Eastern Catholic Church in the world. It remains that today. When Western Ukraine was permanently occupied by the Soviet Union, the Communists decided to liquidate the Ukrainian Catholic Church in 1946 and to hand it over to the Russian Orthodox Church. At this time, many martyrs for the faith arose in the ranks of the Ukrainian Catholic Church. In spite of a fierce persecution, an underground church developed with secret bishops, priests, religious, and a dedicated laity. The events of 1989, that is the breakup of the Soviet Union, permitted this church to reappear from her catacomb existence after huge crowds of several hundred thousand faithful publicly demanded the legalization or reestablishment according to state law. The action of repossessing its churches and former possessions went on for years and years. Today the church consists of roughly five million people in Ukraine and many others throughout the world. It constitutes the largest Catholic Church in the former Soviet Union and the largest among the Eastern Catholic Churches in the world. The Ukrainian Catholic emigrants over the years have been able to erect eparchies or dioceses in the entire world. Together, 15 in the free world and a number more in Ukraine. Having re-established their church hierarchy in Ukraine after 1989, a synod was installed of all the bishops of the church to govern the church. And so the Ukrainian Catholic Church has a synodal structure with the major archbishop as its head. The church which Bishop Ortinsky came to head in 1907 
was at that time called the Greek Catholic Church. It included a number of people of various national identities. Some of them referred to themselves as Rusins, others as Ukrainians, others as Subcarpathians, -Car still others as Slovaks, and even Hungarians. So it was a multinational church. Bishop Ortinsky tried to emphasize that he was not the leader of a national church, but rather the leader of the Greek Catholic Church, which included many different nationalities in the United States. His task was not easy, as the major archbishop mentioned in his homily today, because gathering together so many people of different national identities was indeed a task most difficult. He achieved, however, great success and in large measure established the foundation of the Greek Catholic Church in this country. Following his death, he did not live very long. He died in 1916 of pneumonia. Following his death, the church was divided into two separate jurisdictions. What is today called the Byzantine Ruthenian Catholic Church with a metropolia centered in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and what is today called the Ukrainian Catholic Church with a metropolia centered here in Philadelphia. Also, other Eastern Catholic churches also arose and later developed so that there are many Eastern Catholic churches re represented in the United States today. An interesting point to bring up is that there is a special relic enshrined in the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception here in Philadelphia. The Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception has the honor of being the only cathedral in the world with a first-class relic of Blessed Yosefata, the co-foundress of the Sisters Servants of Mary Immaculate. Sister Josefata Hordashevska was beatified on June 27, 2001, during Pope John Paul II's historic trip to Ukraine. Blessed Josefata's life was a life of service to others and a deep striving for continual union with Christ. She taught the sisters that followed her that as Christians we need to be aware of the needs of the times and be willing to bring the values of the gospel into society in which we live. She taught the sister servants to care for the sick. She founded daycare centers and kindergartens. She and the sisters taught youth and adults basic Christian beliefs and Bible stories, church music and prayers. They cared for village churches and sewed vestments. The call of Christ is continually renewed and in that renewal, to adapt to the needs of the times is a constant concern. Today, sister servants minister in 15 countries of the world, continuing to serve wherever the need was the greatest. Archbishop blesses the congregation with the body and blood of Christ. Save your people, O God, and bless your inheritance.
the consecrated gifts are now transferred from the main altar to the side table of pre preparation. As the major archbishop proclaims, blessed is our God, always, now, and ever, and forever. The deacon proclaims the litany of thanksgiving. Твоєю благодатью, день увесь досконалий, святий, мирний і безрічний, випросивши самі себе і один одного, і все життя наше Христу Богові віддаємо. Освящення наше, і тобі славу воссилаємо, Отчу і Сину, і Святому Духові, Нині і повсяк час, і на віки віки. After this litany, a con-celebrating priest proclaims, Let us go forth in peace, and then sings the prayer behind the ambo. This was at one time in the ancient liturgy, the conclusion of the divine liturgy. In today's liturgy, the conclusion is somewhat longer.
the prayer behind the ambo is now being recited. It is a special prayer composed especially for this occasion. responds, Amen, and blessed be the name of the Lord now and forever. This time, the Apostolic Nuncio to the United States, Archbishop Pietro Sambi, will be introduced. I have the honor to read a message of His Holiness Pope Benedict XVI for this exceptional and solemn occasion. His Beatitude Cardinal Lubomir Usar. Major Archbishop of Kiev, Halic. The Holy Father was pleased to be informed of the celebration taking place in Philadelphia on 30th September 2007 to mark the centenary of the arrival of the first Ukrainian eparch in the United States of America. His Holiness sends cordial greetings to your beatitude. To Metropolitan Archbishop Stefan Soroka, to the members of the Holy Synod, and to all the beloved Ukrainian faithful in North America. He joins you in giving thanks to God for the courageous witness of faith shown by so many Ukrainian Catholics during the persecution they endured in their homeland. And he rejoices that so many of them, having been forced to flee their homes, were able to find a welcoming Christian community of their own tradition in their new home in the West. At this time of, their, of thanksgiving for the blessings of the past hundred years, the Holy Father encourages the Ukrainian Catholic community in America to continue their efforts to promote the unity of all Christians, mindful of their special position as a bridge between the tradition of East and West, commending all of you to the intercession of St. Joseph, Bishop and Martyr, and invoking upon you 
the constant protection of the Mother of God, the Holy Father cordially imparts his apostolic blessing. Cardinal Tarsisio Bertone, Secretary of State. Blaženišemu kardinalu Ljubomiru Huzur, Huzuru, Vrhovnomu arhijepiskopu... Now, Auxiliary Bishop John Bura of the Archeparchy of Philadelphia reads the same letter from His Holiness, Pope Benedict XVI. Jeho svjatljist nacelaje srdečni vitanja vašemu blaženstvu, metropolitovi arhijepiskopu Stefanovi Soroci, členom Svjetovo Senodu ta vsim uljubljenim ukrajinskim virnim v pivnični Americi. Vin prejednuje se do vas v molitvi pod djaki Bohovi za mužnje svidotstvo vire vejevlene tak bahatjima ukrajincemi katolikami v čase peresljidovanj na jihni zemlji i radije še tak bahato z njih, jaki boli vehnani z svojo domu, smogli znajte previtnu hristijansku spilnotu jihnjoji vlastnoji tradiciji na novi batkjuščeni na zahodji. V čas blavdarenja za blavoslovenja minulih sta let rokiv, svetiši otec zaohočuje ukrajinsku katoličku spilnotu v Americi prodolžovati svoje zuselja v sprejanje jednosti vsih hristijan, usvidomljujuče svoje osobljive misce, jak mosta miž shidnjoju ta zahidnjoju tradicijaju. Doručajuše vsih vas Zastupnictvo Svetoho Josefata je preskupa velikomučnika i prezivajuče na vas postine zastupnictvo Materi Božiji, Svetiši Otec srdečno udjeljaje vam svoje apostolske blavoslovenja. Kardinal Tarčizo Bertone, državni sekretar. The con-celebrating archbishops and bishops are now preparing for the dismissal prayers. The blessing of the Lord be upon you with his grace and love for mankind, always now and forever and ever. Svjeri slavnih se hvaljnega apostoliju, 
Vosviatik od čarašho Joana Zlotou sto archiebiskava Konstantinia Hrada, sviatik, što ich sehodni slavimo, sviatik, što ich videla ukrajinska zemlja i vsih sviatik, pomiluje i spase nas, jaka blahi i čoloviko ljube. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are very grateful to the Holy Father for the blessing, for the kindness that he shows to us, and for his care and remembrance about us. And therefore, may God grant him a long life of many happy years. The people respond, may God grant him many happy years. All those who have gathered here for this occasion, may God grant them many happy years. Once again, the choir sings, God grant them many happy years. One of the con-celebrating bishops now commemorates the major archbishop, asking God to grant him many happy years, and he blesses the faithful in return. The Divine Liturgy is now concluded, and the recessional begins. choir sings once again, may God grant many happy years to all those who have participated in this special occasion today and to all people of goodwill throughout the world. We want to take this opportunity to thank you for joining us today in this celebration of the centennial of the appointment and the arrival of the first Greek Catholic bishop in the United States. bishops of the Ukrainian Catholic Church from Ukraine, from actually from Ukraine, who are present for this divine liturgy, as they are, they are attending the World Synod of Ukrainian Catholic Bishops in Philadelphia. 
something around 15 Roman Catholic, Latin bishops are present as well, four Orthodox bishops, numerous other representatives of local churches, Protestant churches and evangelical churches in the Philadelphia area and other places, surrounding areas. Thank you again for joining us today and may God bless all of you and bless his church.